So you were in the juvenile system in the nineties, right? Yeah. Did you ever cross paths with uh Robert Yami Sanifer? No. When I went to jail, Yami was already he had already uh he had already died. But when I was in the streets in the world, I crossed paths with Yami. Man, we was friends at one point. Then we turned to enemies, and right before he died, we had turned back into friends. You know. How did you guys become friends? Uh. Because we was in tour with each other as shorties, we the same age. And we was in tour with each other as shorties, like his brother Lorenzo, Tyshawn, Victor, he used to run with Kevin and Calvin and Alonzo, Excel and all of them. Which is, you know, they all my guys. I'm, everybody who's still here, they love me. You know, and uh, we were just on different sides and we ran across each other because we used to hustle at the gas station, pump the gas, wiping windows as little kids, selling candy selling our little weed bags, you know, and we ran across each other because we were all in the same neighborhood doing the same thing. So that's how we end up uh, uh, becoming enemies when the peace treaty broke. broke. And like I was saying before we uh, parted and got back to it, is that like when you GD, you on this side, and when you BD, you on this side. And it's been like that for a very long time. You know, that's a, the history of that goes back farther than my generation. It goes back, you know, with, uh, with Larry Hoover and King, and, and King David and him leaving everything to Larry Hoover and the BD feeling some type of way about that, you know, and that's how that all started. So when you say you were on one side, Yami was on the other side, I mean, he was a BD and you were a GD, right? That's correct. You were saying something about a peace treaty. So a peace treaty was about organizing all the disciples together so that we could focus on the whole movement of what the disciples were supposed to be about, which is all about empowering black people and the movement going forward. But when King David died on his bedside, Larry was there and he gave the mob to Larry and told Larry, look, man, you be the king and you decide how you want to do this. And Larry decided to become BGD. And then when that didn't work out, he said, OK, well, Booty Black, you can be do what you want to do. Shorty, you can do what you want to do and I'm going to do what I want to do. And every one of them took their own way. And, and they were still under the concept of the folks, but they did it all differently because everybody didn't agree with that. So when we came into play about it, the, the, the split had already came about and, and we were already living as GDs and they were living as BDs. And at first we were together, but because Larry still had so much say because man, David had died, that's when the problem came. They didn't want to honor what Larry was laying down. So it started up there back before it got down here and they just instilled in us a war. So they, they didn't teach us about the teachers of what was going on. We ain't find that out till later on in life. But as we got older, we started to realize, okay, this was something that happened to higher up. And it fell down to us because of disagreement, because they didn't want to agree with the fact that King David gave Larry Hooper the mob and let him decide what he wanted to do with it. So you and Lil Yami were enemies because of that? We were enemies because of he was obedient off the GD. That, that stuff was unbeknownst to us as kids. So you guys had no personal beef, even though you seem like you can be friends. You had no personal beef other than GD Bitty beef. Not really, no. What did you think when Lil Yami got killed? I went to his funeral. I loved him. My sister, my family went to his funeral with the people that were close to me. Like uh, at that time, me and Yami had got back close to each other. You know, uh, when all the shit happened with his case and everything, he, he was with me. No, uh, and I figured out everything, how everything went. But at the end of the day, the first thing my guy's telling me to do, of course, get out of there, you ain't got nothing to do with that. So that kind of pushed them away from my side. Me and my guys, like, you know, uh, and some of my guys was white stores and everything, but that yummy thing was so, so loud. You no, know, Pac even mentioned, mentioned it in the show, and rest in peace to Pac, you know, and it was so loud that, once my, my men started to tell me that I, I couldn't be associated with that, I was still a shorty. I was still under that structure. I couldn't be associated with it. A couple days after that, he ended up dying. But I know his mom. I know his dad, Lorenzo. Uh, Lorenzo. I know his brother, Lorenzo. I know I know, I know know everybody. I know his whole family, just like they know mine. Was Yami a notorious killer? No. Tupac starts to get interested in the Yami story, right? And um, he came to Chicago and he disrespected a group of GDs and BDs. You know about that? 
Yes, I do. That was at a concert. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so Tupac was feeling the whole Yummy thing. He felt some type of way about Yummy dying. And he knew he had already heard about the GDs and the BDs and he made a statement. And it almost cost him his life here in Chicago. I think that was at the Rosemont Horizon, if I ain't mistaken. And uh, he just, he felt some type of way about Yummy's death. He heard about through the news what was going on. He had a couple contacts in the city, particularly Do or Die, Do or Die was signed over there at Death Row at the time. So they had some hands-on connections with the guys in the city. And uh, at that time, uh, uh, Pop was able to reach out to them and ask questions and figure it out because he was basically the head of Death Row under Shield Knight. And they was able to tell Pop what was going on with Yummy, how he died, what he was associated with, and what everything led up to it. And then he decided to you know, come and do a show and talk about that and a lot of guys didn't take county to that and a lot of gunshots were fired at him he had to be unbrothered up out of the place and barely escaped with his life